So the Razer Basilisk has had a very similar story to the Death Adder, where it's been re-released like way too many times. But for the Basilisk, they decided to go a different direction with the Death Adder, where they went super lightweight with light features. They decided to go super heavyweight with a ton of features. And this is the Basilisk V3 Pro. But at the weight and at the asking price, is it worth it? Let's see. So in terms of shape, they didn't make any modifications to the shape or the outer shell really at all. It has the same lighting around the edges and it looks just super, super pretty. It's using the most recent V3 Razer Optical Switches rated at 90 million clicks. But for some reason, mouse one and two do feel a little lighter than the Death Adder V3 Pro and the Viper V2 Pro. Lots of programmable buttons, 10 of them to be exact including left and right scroll, as well as what Razer calls hyper-scrolling, which was also present on the Wired V3. This is basically the same thing as Logitech's free scroll, but it also has something called Smart Reel, where if you're scrolling slowly, it has your regular steps, but if you scroll past a certain speed, it'll automatically switch over to a free scrolling wheel. The thumb rest and overall shape of this mouse makes it super comfy to use, and it is primarily gonna be a palm grip mouse for most people. Um, you can get away with claw grip. I was clawing it a lot when I was playing with it in game doing testing, and it felt great that way too. Unfortunately, it does still have those polarizing rubber sides on both left and right side. There's been a lot of reports of people where they get it really worn down fairly quickly and it's not like easy to fix because they're fixed into the shell. So not the smartest move in my opinion. It has their Focus Pro 3395 sensor and it has really exceptionally smooth PTFE skates out of the box. Build quality on this is excellent. It feels like a tank. No, no creaking, no squeaking, no flexing anywhere. It just feels incredibly solid. But with that build quality also comes weight. This thing is coming in at about 112 grams. So compared to a lot of the lighter weight mice that have been coming out recently, switching from those to this thing, this really feels like a brick. However, I will say once I got it in game and I was actually playing with it, it didn't really take me all that long to get used to the weight. Honestly, that could partly be my old muscle memory coming from way back when gaming mice were usually 100 plus grams. But really, it wasn't terrible, but I know a lot of people are not gonna like that weight. But on the other hand, this isn't really geared towards those types of gamers anyway. It's also wireless charging compatible, meaning that out of the box, it's not going to be compatible with it. But if you buy this little puck from Razer, there's a little wireless puck that goes underneath the mouse. If you install that on the mouse, it becomes wireless charging compatible. There is also a wireless charging dock. It's magnetic, very easy to use. It's, it's way better than the old dock that was being used on the Ultimate line of mice. And as an added bonus with the dock, you can also increase the polling rate up to 4,000 hertz if you'd like. Otherwise, the mouse itself is locked out at 1,000 hertz. That does sound tempting, but do be aware, unless you already have a monitor that can run at 240 hertz and your computer can run a game, at 240 frame rate, then you really won't get too much benefit out of that higher polling rate. And you also have to consider that a lot of people are reporting that higher polling rate from the mouse can actually decrease your computer performance somewhat. So just take all of that with a grain of salt. All right, so how does the Basilisk V3 Pro stack up? Let's give this thing a gecko grade and see how it does. So starting off for gaming, this one was a little bit hard because there's a lot of conflicting qualities to this mouse, but I ended up giving the Basilisk V3 Pro an 8 out of 10 for gaming use. The problem is it's just trying to do so much at the same time, it doesn't do either one thing perfectly. It's got excellent wireless qualities, it's got the optical low latency switches, it's got a top tier performing sensor, and if you have the docking, it can go up to 4K polling rate. The issue is it's also really heavy, and a lot of gamers today really are chasing the lower weight mice. So for those of you who prefer a lower weight, this really kind of conflicts with those qualities of the mouse that would make it good for a lot of first person shooter gamers. Now again, that isn't necessarily everybody. Some people can use a 90 gram mouse and really not care. Personally, once I jumped into game with this mouse, it really didn't take me too, too long to readjust. It felt good in game. But I do know that a large number of people really aren't gonna like that weight. So the score suffers a bit there. All right, now for everyday use. This thing gets an easy 10 out of 10 for me. 
This has so many awesome features that make it just a joy to use for everyday tasks. It's got dual wireless, Bluetooth, and 2.4 Hertz. So if you're using a multiple device setup, you can easily switch between devices at will. Along with that flexibility, there's 10 programmable buttons on this mouse. So if you're using something like Premiere, you're doing editing, or if you're doing some other productivity task, and you have a lot of figurative real estate with these buttons to program a lot of macros as well as shortcuts to make those tasks easier. I was actually using this mouse to edit the last video that I recorded, and I love editing with this thing. It feels so good to be able to have all those shortcuts just in one place. Not only that, it feels super comfortable with that thumb rest, just the shape fills out the hand so perfectly. It is just excellent for everyday programming, editing, just productivity stuff in general. And it's also wireless compatible, so if you dip in for that wireless charging puck, you can use a wireless charger that's already on your desk, or you can buy the dock, which is very conveniently magnetic. So whenever you need a charge, it, whenever you're done for the day, whatever that happens to be, just slip it onto that magnetic dock and you're good to go. One thing to keep in mind, because this is just what I've heard based on interactions on Reddit with, with some people from Razer. It sounds like along with the Basilisk, they're also working on re-releasing the Naga. And the rep that was talking about it specifically said it wouldn't be anything like weight reductions that they did with the Death Adder. So I'm assuming they're going to be going the same route as the Basilisk and increase the features for it. And more than likely, my guess would be that it's going to be compatible with that dock. Now I'll be honest, I don't see why someone would want to have a Basilisk and a Naga on their desk since they fill similar niches of use. But hey, just something to keep in mind. But all of those features do come at a cost. Whereas with the Death Adder, it came more as a R&D cost, as well as the shape change and all of that. This is just packing a ton of quality and features. This thing is about $160 MSRP. If all you wanna do is make it compatible with wireless charging, the Puck is another $20 on top of that. And if you want the Dock, the Dock does come bundled with the Puck. So you don't have to buy them both. But the dock with that puck is $70. Razer's website does have slight discounts if you want to buy them together, but really it kind of just covers a little bit of that shipping cost. So yeah, that stings. And each option makes sense for different people depending on your priorities. So to try and make more sense of each of the options, I'm gonna grade cost with each of those options. So when it comes to the cost for the mouse alone, I give it an 8 out of 10. For the mouse with the puck, I give it a 7 out of 10. And for the mouse with the charging dock, I give it a 5 out of 10. It's just hard to justify that dock at that price when it already comes at 1000 hertz, which is perfectly useful for competitive use. So unless you really want wireless charging and a magnetic dock and 4K hertz pulling rate, then it doesn't really make sense to get the dock for just one of those features for this mouse. But it's in kind of this weird place where if you wanna get one of those features, you have to buy that whole thing, which is $70. And again, that's pretty dang expensive. Now for my personal opinion on it, when I first got it, because of that cost and everything else, it was not gonna be super great in my opinion. But after using it and just the convenience of the mouse itself, not even necessarily considering the dock, it actually has really grown on me. And for my personal opinion, I give it an eight out of 10. But it is worth considering the other basilisks because they still exist and they're much cheaper. Now the wired V3 is 11 grams lighter. So it may not sound like a whole lot, but in hand, it's definitely noticeable right off the bat. And really the only thing you're missing out on is the V3 optical switches and the wireless function. It does have the previous generation of their Focus Plus sensor, and even that sensor is top grade, excellent performance. And it comes in at just $70. So if you like the actual physical features, not so much the wireless of this mouse, then the wired option may actually make more sense for you. The only thing that irks me with the wired V3 is the way the skate are made for it, it drags really bad, even on fairly firm mouse pads. Anything outside of like a glass pad, you're gonna get that right side of the mouse scraping along the surface, even if you're applying just moderate pressure.
The other one to consider is the Viper Ultimate. If you're really stuck on wanting the wireless functionality, still want all the buttons, but maybe you don't care as much about the most recent switches and the most recent sensor. It also drops the hyper scroll as well as the Bluetooth. Although that scroll wheel is adjustable. There's a little wheel underneath the mouse that lets you adjust the tension of the scroll wheel, which is nice, but definitely not as convenient as the scroll wheel on this. And right now you can get that for about $100 with the ultimate charging dock. So there are still some really good quality of life features that might be worth it for you. Honestly, the only thing that holds it back for gaming is that weight. If it wasn't for the weight, the shape is great, feels super comfortable to use. I'm still hitting plenty of really great shots in game during testing, and all of these components are top grade components. So if they could just shave off a little bit of weight, I would have given it a better grade. But for each configuration, the standalone mouse gets an 8.5 out of 10. The mouse with that wireless charging puck gets an 8.3 out of 10 and the mouse with the charging dock gets a 7.8 out of 10. Honestly the Basilisk V3 Pro gets a ton of stuff really well but unfortunately because of the cost of that dock and just how heavy this thing is it does definitely have some opportunities to improve. The prices definitely sting for this mouse but at least with the standalone mouse you do get what you pay for in terms of the features to price. It starts to make less sense the higher up you go with the puck and then even more so with the charging dock. Mostly because the features that the dock brings conflict with the heavy weight of the mouse itself. The dock would make more sense with a first person shooter lightweight mouse, but unfortunately that would probably also increase the weight of the mouse. So it's in kind of an awkward position there. I could definitely see why someone would want it. In my testing, in my day-to-day -day use with it so far, it's been super convenient just to have that charging dock there. There's not a loose cable that I have to go dig around and find and plug into the mouse. When I need to charge it or when I need to walk away from the desk, I just slap the mouse on that dock and I'm good to go. When I come back, I got a fully charged mouse. If what you want is a mouse that has all of the comfort, features, and quality of life stuff that makes it just a joy to use for editing and day-to-day -day stuff, but you also want a game on it, with the lower priority being gaming, then I could definitely recommend this mouse, at least standalone. You kind of have to decide for yourself if the dock makes sense for your use case. Honestly, for the asking price of the mouse, you could technically get a different, cheaper mouse specifically for productivity, and then get another gaming mouse for gaming use and just have two mice on your desk. But it's hard to beat the convenience of just having one mouse that really does everything pretty darn well. But you also have to decide if the weight makes a big difference for you. It's just so nice to just have that one mouse that does everything. But again, everyone's priorities are gonna be a little bit different. So you have to figure out what your priorities are and what makes sense for you. Because I could easily see someone absolutely loving this and this being their end game mouse, but I could also definitely see someone absolutely hating this mouse because it doesn't really do what they need from a mouse. But either way, thank you so much for watching. You guys take care, God bless, and I'll see you next time, okay? Later.